I remember it was around two years ago when it was announced that David Tennant would be recording roughly 6,000 box sets for Big Finish because a lot of his work dried up during the COVID pandemic and during lockdown and everything. It's how we got the 10th Doctor and River Song box set. It's how we got all three parts of Dalek Universe. It's how we got out of time. Basically, Big Finish have been keeping David Tennant incredibly busy, but they also announced all of this stuff for at roughly the same time, with the exception of this 10th Doctor Classic Companions box set, which they held off announcing by just a couple of months. So we had basically during this period of two years reached david tennant's 10th doctor saturation but we don't have anything else this is the end of the 10th doctor saturation period we've got 10th doctor classic companions which sees the 10th doctor in a trilogy of adventures written by john dorney lizzie hopley and roy gill he's joined by k9 uh, played by john leeson reprising his role as usual and he also has three separate adventures with three classic companions each played by the respective actors we've got leela played by louise jameson We've got Nyssa of Trakan, played by Sarah Sutton, and we've got Ace, aka Dorothy McShane, voiced by Sophie Aldred. So we have a trilogy of stories, not they're not connected at all, with the exception of them being Tenth Doctor and K9 stories. And they basically, I think, take place one after the other. There is kind of a bit of a through line with K9. Uh, over the course of the trilogy but for the most part these are three standalone stories that don't really connect with each other the first one is splinters by john dorney which opens with the 10th doctor finding K9 in space K9 has been adrift there for a very long time under orders from romana helping to sort of uh, clear up some messes from the time war he and K9 then find themselves in some sort of strange weird mythical fairy tale forest and they meet Leela who is protecting a village which is under siege from a creature called the Spriggan and the Spriggan is a weird fairy tale creature that takes the children of the of this village on their 18th birthday and the 10th doctor and K9 arrive within like an hour of this uh, this upcoming 18th birthday about to start meaning that some of the villagers are understandably quite on edge let's play a clip from splinters you're early one of the advantages of a time machine does make it awfully easy to be punctual. Only trouble is, I'm not exactly sure what I'm early for. Your death. No! <coughs> oh, well, caught. Mid-air and everything. Leela! Leela, what have you done? Stopped you making a mistake, Peter Kelly. This is not the one we hunt. Leela! It's you! Ha! But he comes now. He comes today of all days when my daughter has but an hour left of her freedom. Now, the form may not be exact, but I feel that creature in him. You attack one of my oldest friends. He would not come here with malicious intent, nor accompany one who did. I'm glad someone's figured that out. What, a company? What do you mean a company? Silence, stranger. I am right. Am I not, canine? Affirmative, mistress. You are here to help us? Affirmative, mistress. Yeah, right, I, I see what's happened here. And this man, he is to be trusted. Affirmative, mistress. He is the doctor. <gasps> doctor? Well, I was going to say. It is you. Hello, savage. Been a long time. The implication of this box set is kind of mad when you think about it, especially with uh, like how busy the Tenth Doctor has been during his supposed final days and final weeks as this incarnation. When he does this farewell tour, he meets versions four, five, and six of himself. He also meets the Thirteenth Doctor in the Titan comics as well, twice, and and apparently he also meets Ace, Nyssa, and Leela, and K9. My goodness, it's quite a reunion tour for his final few days as this incarnation but yeah so what i like about this story though and this box set in particular is that it's basically playing around quite safely within big finish continuity there is a reference to the last time leela saw an incarnation of the doctor which was the war doctor there is a throwaway reference to a story with the one of the war doctor box sets uh, the casualties of war set i believe with the late great john hurt but leela doesn't quite remember it and that's fine it's all time war it's all gone wibbly wobbly However, while I actually really liked the interplay and the relationship between the 10th Doctor and Leela in this story, I think the issue with this story is the Spriggan, because 
there is a bit of a twist as to who the Spriggan is and the identity of it and where it's come from and it's it's uh, basically its home as well. But I don't really think it was a twist that felt earned. I also think it was a surface level detail. When it comes to the actual identity of the Spriggan, it was like, oh, here's a big revelation. Anyway, moving on, and it didn't quite feel earned, especially for the implications that it was, it was, it felt like it was trying to have within its own story, but it never really worked, in my opinion. I also think that this is just a sake of, like, bad timing. This is what I feel like is the third time in just this year alone that a revived series Doctor has had an encounter with a fairy tale creature. The Spriggan is like Sleeping Beauty meets Rumpelstiltskin. That's what the 10th Doctor says. So we are dealing with, like, a fairy tale creature that has rules to follow within myth and uh, myth and legend. Um, that's its own version of science and its own rules that it has to follow. It, it, um, it basically chooses its targets when they're born and then on their 18th birthday it comes to collect them that's the rules that the spriggan has to follow however we also had the grimini grew with the ninth doctor in station to station we also had recently i think it was even on one of the last live streams i did or the one before where the ninth doctor encountered jack frost like i feel like we're sort of doing the motions with these revived series doctors where oh we're kind of running out of creatures for them to run into Let's just turn to the fairy tales. It ju it kind of feels a little bit been there, done that, which is a shame because I do think that the interplay between Ten and Leela is really effective. K Nine also does an awful lot of um, of uh, he also does a lot of heavy lifting in this box set. John Leeson naturally just doesn't put a foot wrong. In terms of the actual implications of the story, though, it's fine. It's solid. I enjoyed Splinters by John Dorney. People were raving about this story online. They were like, Mr. Tadis, I can't wait for you to listen to Splinters. Splinters is terrific. Splinters is like the best thing I've heard all year. I, I can't quite meet you there. It feels a little bit inconsequential and a little bit insubstantial. I think it was trying to aim for higher heights, especially with the identity of the Spriggan itself. But for me, it never quite landed. It was a little bit disappointing, to be honest, but mainly because other people have hyped it up. If I'd gone into it without any of that hype, I wouldn't be saying it's disappointing. But Splinters is fine. It's a decent story. It's a decent fairy tale. David Tennant is terrific across the entire box set, but I do love the enthusiasm that he gives for Leela as well. It, I think that he naturally steps into the, the the shoes of the fourth Doctor, sort of um, the the My Fair Lady comparisons, where you do have somebody of, of class and distinction, shall we say, who has to tame the savage beast. Uh, I think that even though the fourth Doctor and the tenth Doctor are superficially quite very different, the relationship between Ten and Leela, they do fit together really, really well, like, for, like Tom Baker and Leela did back in the 1970s. I think that works really well. We also have a second story. We've got The Stuntman by Lizzie Hopley, and this is an interesting one to talk about. It's because it feels like even just picking at it even slightly will we'll, we'll, we'll just be about spoilers, really. Let's go for the big finish plot synopsis, though. The Doctor and K-9 enter a virtual world of a movie stuntman to help Nyssa escape a time war criminal's schemes. So... I'm glad that it did mix up the formula somewhat because otherwise I would be playing three clips in a row of the 10th Doctor encountering a, encountering a companion and going Nissa of Traken or Leela or Ace, you know, like the, the way that the 10th Doctor does, obviously. I, I, I'm glad that they didn't repeat that. They do introduce Nissa in a much more different way than they do Leela and Ace over the course of this box set because we first meet Nissa and her father as well. Uh, they are stunt performers in Hollywood. Hollywood, uh, implied to be um, a cu current day Hollywood, but in terms of the language and the rhetoric, they do seem to be hearkening back to the golden age of the Hollywood studio system. And it's within this setting that we first meet uh, Nyssa under the alias of a stuntman, or a stuntwoman, I should say, and also Nyssa's father, who is also a stuntman. Oh, excuse me, sorry, hello, are you Kent Novum? You're in the wrong queue, lad. Sylvia Wren's over there. Oh, no, no, it's your autograph I'm after, Mr. Novum, if that's OK. Mine? Hmm? And your daughter's. I'm a big fan. A fan of stunt work? Unusual. Well, the real stars of the movie always get overlooked, don't they? I like this guy. Who shall I sign it for? Just Doctor will do. 
Doctor? She doesn't need a doctor. She's fine. She's a professional. Oh, no, I know that, Mr. Noble. Look, if Gommon called you in to pick holes in my safety checks, he's got a Dad, nerve. calm down. No, oh, really, I'm only here to admire your work. That jump was incredible. Hearts are still thumping. Thank you, Doctor. And that car roll this morning. Oh, oh, good luck. First she's ever done. One take. Are you on some kind of tour, Doctor? Uh, oh, I've been left to my own devices. To be honest, I'm a bit lost. I could do with some help. Oh, oh. <laughs> ah. <gasps> Miragia Studios. Oh, never been on a movie set quite like this before, eh? We can show you around, can't we, Dad? It is a bit of a maze. Really? Well, I, I'd be splendid. We've got to check the bike jump. Casey, you checked it a million times. Come on, we can at least show him the soundstage. Soundstage, yes, please. Much like Splinters, the stuntman is fine. It is solid. It feels like, it feels like I'm being so mean by not adoring the, these stories. It's fine. The main issue with the stuntman, in my opinion, however is that it feels like because of the format it it does feel like a good way to break the structure and the format of the other stories where it is the doctor finding uh, an older version of the companions who we left behind centuries ago but with this one where he encounters nissa but nissa doesn't know that she's nissa she's in a, a virtual simulation where she's a stunt woman and her father's a stunt man as well in the hollywood studio system you know if, if, it's a good way to mix up the formula but because of that it kind of means that Nyssa when you think about it really could be replaced with any other companion and fundamentally the story would not change you could have replaced Nyssa with uh, with Joe Grant with Jamie with even a companion who uh, whose actor is no longer with us like Zoe um or, or um or somebody else I honestly you could have even made this be Melanie Bush and like you the story itself wouldn't fundamentally change. And Mary Basil found in thought, well, to be fair, what were they going to do with Nyssa? Here's the thing, though. The last time Nyssa was in a big finish box set was in the mas it was in the War Master set, Killing Time. Zoe's actress says, who am I thinking? No, sorry, Wendy Padbury is still alive, sorry. I was thinking of, um, it's, uh, Victoria Waterfield. Yeah, Deborah Wally, she's unfortunately the one who's not with us anymore. Wendy Padbury is, I, I, I apologise, uh, for, um, she, she's gonna get a lot of, um, of sad, her family's gonna get a lot of sad letters tomorrow because I accidentally messed up on a live stream. I apologise. Deborah Watling is unfortunately no longer with us, but Wendy Padbury is, my apologies. But yeah, um, with the, the War Master box set, Killing Time, there was a story there with Nyssa, which set her up in a really interesting and fascinating place. And that story even ends on a cliffhanger. So I thought maybe this virtual world was maybe going to be following on from that box set. Maybe they just wouldn't draw an explicit reference to it. W with the War Master box set from last year, we do have like precedent of changing up Nyssa's status quo and even a new one for her to be in for the 10th Doctor to hypothetically rescue her from at the end of that story from killing time but no because we meet nissa through this virtual world it means that there isn't even quite a, a proper introduction i will say though because there is no proper introduction because they're hopping from virtual world and film set to film set and genre to genre it means that it's uh you know it is a very well paced box set it's very pacey very energetic uh, as they're hopping from scene to scene in this virtual world what virtual world they're in and what on earth is going on i can't really tell you without spoilers but it is a fun romp i just feel like there's some missed opportunities on the table here in terms of what it does for the actual characters of the companions it does feel like in this box set nissa is the one who drew the short straw and that is a bit of a shame but in terms of uh, the uh, my favorite box set of the story that is quantum of axos by roy gill where we meet ace aka dorothy mcshane uh, where we've got uh, Ace running a charitable earth, her charity, and encounters the 10th Doctor. But not only does she encounter the 10th Doctor, but she has been bequeathed with a Christmas present, actually. A girl's best friend. Ace has been gifted a Christmas present in the form of her own canine. And basically, the first 10 to 15 minutes of this story 
is almost like an episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures, where Ace has to kind of go undercover to this uh, to this organization, which is using phone data and privacy clauses. The clause of access, ha ha ha, that was the most audacious bit of wordplay in this entire box set, and I absolutely loved it. But yeah, Ace has got her own canine, and I think that's really, I think yeah, I think that's really really clever, um, a really great way to mix up the formula in a way. But yeah, let's play a clip when the uh, when Ace and Canine encounter the Doctor and also Canine. You keeping an eye open, Canine? Affirmative. Guard mode engaged. I've never known a business generate so little paperwork. There should be reports, and memos, hirings and firings. They're big on corporate branding, but there's, there's no substance. Like they just dropped out of nowhere. Intruder detected! Intruder detected! Yeah, yeah, heard you the first time. I'm Dorothy McShane. This isn't what it looks like. Ace! It's you! <laughs> it's me! It's the Doctor! <laughs> you keep changing. Oh, well, you started it. You changed first. You grew up. Oh, that's different. You've got a new face. Again. And you're still not Scottish. Are you sure about that, lassie? I can do Scottish. I'm totally Scottish. <laughs> oh, Professor. Oh, oh, but you're so strong. Don't you forget it. Hold on, hold on. I plenty of time for hugs later. Let me figure this. Work out a timeline. You've met other me's. What were they like? Uh, different. Good different or bad different? Different different. I mean, the last one I saw no, was... No, no, a... I, uh, hang on. <laughs> Second thoughts, don't tell me. Spoilers. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier with Leela, they draw explicit reference to prior Big Finish stories. So when that line happened, like Ace has encountered other Doctors, I thought it was maybe a reference to prior Big Finish stories. But people seem to be thinking it either is talking about At Childhood's End, which is the novelization written by Sophie Aldred, or maybe even The Power of the Doctor. Even though The Power of the Doctor was filmed and put together like after this was put together and filmed and we know that because of the recording dates and when the filming dates are like this was recorded before sophie aldred filmed the power of the doctor so maybe i don't know maybe they saw i don't know we don't know what's going on it's all wibbly wobbly but either way it's it's fun it's especially that little scottish line as well but yeah this is basically uh, the 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 ace mcshane adventures rather than the sarah jane adventures where she goes undercover with canine and acts and the axons are trying to infiltrate earth and try and uh turn her turn humanity homogenous so that they can absorb them all you know cl classic axon stuff so yeah in terms of actually composed this was recorded in 2020 wasn't it was it 2021 i one second let's have a look recorded on to be confirmed that's always a good sign this was this was probably recorded in late 2020 to be fair because this was when david tennant was free um like a couple of months into lockdown and i do believe that when i was talking with sophie aldred for the 1963 live stream she did say that she'd recorded that ages ago and she didn't know if it had been announced she didn't know when it was coming out um and she was talking about how far that they were recording either way maybe it's probably some evidence out there but yeah so she has encountered a doctor before it could be 13 it could be six it could be who knows who knows but yeah this was this is another fun adventure i think what makes this most interesting though is when if you if you've seen the claws of axos uh, they they have duplicate versions of other characters, like idealized versions of characters. And that, without getting too heavy into spoilers, there is a scene where older Ace is transformed into a younger version of Ace. And just hearing Sophie Aldred's voice, like instantly go back to younger Ace from when she was a teenager in her early 20s and traveling with the seventh doctor was quite outstanding to listen to and a really great scene between her and, and the tenth doctor outside of that though it's a decent story it's a decent 60 minute romp uh, in the in contemporary england when they try and stop phone apps and privacy and uh, current buzzwords of the day it was fine um that that cover uh, uh crystal moore's dr met ace that's true the velocity doctor there we go is the velocity doctor actually canon in big finish now is that the, is, is that the implications is that what's going on 
Either way, at Mario Bowser Final Foss, overall this box set isn't that worth it. Honestly, if you are the biggest 10th Doctor stand going, and this is like your perfect combination of companions, then yeah, go for this box set. It's... I don't think this is making my top 10 for the year. It is a decent, strong box set. It's fine. Three, uh, like, at worst case, good. At, in best case scenario, real, like, strong stories. They're fine. I think that the 10th Doctor in K9 dynamic is, uh, carries it throughout the whole thing. But it's fine. It is fine. I was going to compose it. It's a fairly cheap set, isn't it? It, it was going for, like, £15 or so. It's £19.99 for the download. It's your standard big finish download RRP. Yeah, it's it's a fine box set. It's alright. I can't really get too worked up about it. It's fine. I can't tell you to avoid it like the plague, but I also can't tell you that it is a must-listen box set. If if you're somebody who um, only knows um, these characters through the revival, uh, like, you know, like the Tenth Doctor, or you only know of like Revival Series Ace because of that Childhood's End or that Season 26 teaser or some big finish stuff that has Ace after... Uh, she's left the seventh doctor it's fine you know you know I, I, it, it's all right yeah m m you know i think maybe with ace and K9, they've kind of opened the door to explore further adventures if they want to i think if they do do a follow-up to this like 10th doctor classic companions volume 2 i think that they need to be a bit more careful about which companions they specifically pick i feel like in this box set it's only really the 10th doctor and ace that have a really unique character dynamic where i'm thinking oh yeah th these two have slotted back into it perfectly and the script is on board with them 100 percent absolutely whereas i think with nissa and even to a lesser extent leela because leela in this story is like so on the defensive like she's the the warrior savage of the sever team because she's facing a foe, a trickster fairy tale foe that cannot be beaten by brawn and strength, it means that she's not fully utilized to her potential. And I also think in the behind the scenes, in the box sets, uh, in the behind the scenes on, on the last disc for this, uh, who who's the producer? Uh, I think it was it was. Um, it might have been either script editor Matt Fitton or, or actually it might have been David Richardson, the producer. Uh, somebody in the behind the scenes interviews for this was saying that we chose the companions uh, primarily due to actor availability. Like who is available to film and record this box set either at home or in studio. And they got Sophie Aldred, Sarah Sutton and Louise Jameson. And I think that they chose the actors first and then thought, okay, what story can we tell with those ones? As opposed to thinking we really, really want to tell this story with the 10th Doctor and zoe harriet because wendy padbury is still alive uh my apologies for that flub earlier so we get that yeah i i, I think if they if they if they're going to do another one of these box sets, they need to come up with the story and the companion pairing first rather than thinking okay here's the three actors we've got available what can we do i think that would be the way forward to do it or maybe they do a 11th Doctor and Classic Companions or a 12th Doctor and Classic Companions. Yeah, so either way, I don't see that unless something changes internally to make another one of these box sets. I don't really see I, I don't really have much desire to listen to another one.